What's going on guys? It's King Touch Pro and welcome back to another video. In today's video, I'm going to show you guys how I make my thumbnails with Photoshop CS6. It's actually really easy. So let's go ahead and begin with the tutorial. All right. So once you're on Google, just look up like images or whatever that you're going to be using for the background. In this case, if I go on to Photoshop, we have right now, let me go ahead and disable all of these other ones here. We just have this plain one. And what I did, I, I just went on uh, COD and then I went uh, Black Ops 3 backgrounds. So you could do whatever you want. You could do, it doesn't have to be gaming backgrounds. It could be anything you guys want, but uh, I'm gonna go ahead and use this one. So I'm gonna go on to view image. I'm gonna drag this into here. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and I'm gonna go ahead and paste it here on our new document. It's just a 1920 by 1080, or I think it's a 1280 by 720. It doesn't really matter what the resolution is, but just drag your background on there. And what I like to do is I like to scale it up a bit, just like that. And let me go ahead and zoom in. And then after that, you want to make sure that your layer is unlocked. Go on to the top and go to image adjustments and go to black and white. From here, it will just desaturate your image. Just click OK. From here, you want to go on to filter. You want to go to blur and then you want to go on to Gaussian blur. And I just do three pixels. And also, it just kind of focuses more on the text. So from here, what I did, I added a gradient. Now, the gradients I will leave in the description so you guys can download them. And what I did is I just go on to the gradient tool by pressing G on the keyboard and you click on the top left right here and you will have, if you've installed it correctly, you will have a bunch of gradients right here that they have already made. And all you have to do is just download the file and then go ahead and install it. It should be like a Photoshop type of file. And once you do that, make sure you restart Photoshop and go back into the gradient tool and then open up the gradient editor by clicking on the top left and you should have all of these here and if not it's very simple just click on the black and white one click this one and choose like a lighter color it doesn't really matter if this is dark or light you can also reverse it if you want but I'm gonna go and choose like a bluish in this case I'm gonna go with something like that and then here I'm gonna do something really dark a darker blue so I'm gonna go something like this you wanna you really want to make it like stand out so something like this would be good and then once you've done that you want to go ahead and uh you could either create a new uh, layer which is what i like to do so i create a new layer so if i don't like it i could always change it and from here i want to go ahead and hold down shift and click upwards or you can hold down if you want depending on what you prefer and then from here you want to go onto your layer make sure it's selected go on to the blend mode and choose screen for this right here something like this so you want to make sure that it's kind of a little bit more dark on the top and more light in the middle something like that so would work or you could do it the opposite and I feel like the opposite looks really nice in my opinion so we're gonna go with something like this so once we've done that we're gonna go ahead and add our texture now the texture I will leave in the description so you guys can download it just download it to your computer and it should be in a JPEG or PNG depending on what file format it is I'm gonna go ahead and just copy that because I don't want to look for it so I'm gonna go ahead and just resize it and just go ahead and zoom out by pressing command minus or command plus and you can scale it up or scale it down i like to scale it a little bit down just so it kind of keeps its resolution and so it doesn't really pixelate or anything like that so i'm gonna go like right here is good press command uh, enter or control enter to accept the changes so right now would be a good idea to rename the layers so i'm gonna go ahead and rename the background layer to just bg i'm gonna name this one to blue uh, gradient so blue gradient and then this one, I'm going to just name this texture. So now we have texture here. Now, if the background is dark, you want to go ahead and just invert that by pressing command minus. And uh, yeah, so that looks pretty good. You could also decrease the uh, opacity. What I do is I go on to blend mode and choose the overlay. And then the opacity, I'll lower that to 65%. If you don't lower it, it's going to look like that. It's going to look really gross. So you can always play around with that if you wish. Another thing that I added is a sunburst. Now, I don't really add this to my thumbnails, but if you guys want to do the same effect, I will leave, again, a download link in the description uh, so you guys can download this Sunburst brush pack. So, go onto the brushes, right-click, and make sure you create a new layer on top of everything, and rename this to Sunburst, just like that. Go ahead and right-click, and go down and select the ones that you have installed. It should be like this. Now, don't ignore the numbers, because that could always be different. But uh, you could go ahead and just choose the ones you like. I just go with the normal 2000, the first one, I believe. And you want to go ahead and rescale this so it's kind of uh, a little bit bigger on the edges right there and kind of guess where it's in the middle. So right there is good. Now it looks green. It's really gross. You could always change the color. 
So just double click and go on to color overlay. Now you can do black. I think black would look better with this. Uh, yeah, it looks better with black. So I think something like that would look a little bit good. I'm um, try to keep it around 13. In between 10 and 15% would be good for this. So once you've done that, what you want to go ahead and do, let me go and zoom up so you guys can see what, what I'm doing. And uh, cool. So the next thing we did is added like a shatter effect. And again, I will leave a download link for the brushes here. All right, guys. So I can't really find the brush or the shatter effect that I did here. I'm not too familiar with which one that is. But uh, I will leave a link for a splatter effect. It's kind of uh, the same effect in a way. But uh, what you want to go ahead and do is just choose a color. Again, I'm going to go with black. And I'm going to go ahead and kind of scale this up using the left and right bracket keys. And I'm going to just do something like this. Something like that would be pretty cool. So what you want to go ahead and do from here is just rename the layer to splatter or whatever you guys want. doesn't really matter. So now what we want to do is add our text. And the text is actually really simple. Also, I'm going to go ahead and lower the opacity on this splatter just because it's too strong. And I'm going to go ahead and change the blend mode. I think soft light would be best and just lower the opacity to around 57 45 50 percent would be good just so it's not too noticeable but it adds like a nice little texture to it go back to the text create a new uh, layer and we're gonna be using the font called perka and you guys can use whatever font you guys want so it doesn't really matter uh all right so thumbnail make sure this is caps and then i'm gonna go ahead and just make a copy of that so thumbnail tutorial and then i'm gonna kind of align it to the left here and scale this up just like so and then from here what you want to go ahead and do is just either you can do it you can put it wherever you guys want you can put it on the left side you can put it on the right side you can put it in the middle so i want to put it on the right side and you want to go ahead and scale this up quite a bit just like that so you guys get your point across so from here what you want to go ahead and do is go down on the styles and i added this with a it came with a pack um i'll leave it in the description it's by bayer i believe so shout out to him for making this, but uh, you want to go ahead and apply the style to it should be like dark purple with a light purple around it. Click on that and it should add something like this. So once you've done that, you want to go ahead and go on to the top text or it could be the lower text, but I like to change the top text and make it white. So I'm going to go on to thumbnail and I'm going to go on to color overlay and I'm going to do white. So it kind of gives it that nice little kind of gradient effect, which is pretty cool. And then the thumbnail, what I like to do with the bottom text is I like to match it with the blue. So in this case, I'm going to go on to tutorial. I'm going to go to color overlay or maybe we can do a different gradient. Maybe this one would be better. Ooh, I like that one. It's like a sunset yellow. This one here, the color overlay. And we're going to do like a orange, more like a dark orange. Kind of you want to make it pop out a little bit so it's not hidden in the background so from here what you want to go ahead and do is uh we want to go ahead and change the perspective on this so what we're going to go ahead and do is command click on both of the text press command e or Control e to merge them together and then now what you want to go ahead and do is right click on the text make sure you're on the same layer and then go on to perspective hold down shift and kind of click and it will kind of change its perspective here and i'm also going to shift click this kind of make it a little bit like that and something like that would be pretty good now we're gonna go ahead and add a picture all right so what i did i just went onto google and just looked up fallout 4 renders and this came up and of course my channel is not a gaming channel but i just thought it'd be kind of cool to use this picture for the thumbnail so i'm gonna go ahead and copy this and paste it onto here and of course it doesn't have to be a gaming you know gaming theme or whatever but i'm gonna drag that behind the text just like that and then now i'm gonna name this to I don't know, um, game character. Now, don't criticize me for not knowing the name of his character. I don't play Fallout 4. So, yeah. Okay, now we're gonna go on to Drop Shadow and we're gonna go ahead and just, you know, copy the same effects that the text has onto the image. So, in this case, I think the spread was something along the lines of like this, I think. I'm not too sure, but uh, something like this would be pretty good. In, in between 22, and then you can make this like 84. And just kind of lower the distance a little bit and then you can change the blending mode just keep everything the same anyways just go on to the stroke if you want to add a stroke you don't have to but it just kind of creates a nice little effect uh to the background so i kind of do something like that and then you can change the blend mode to like multiply and change the opacity quite a bit something like that would be pretty cool 
and lower the size of course so maybe like that or you can do like screen which is my personal favorite and I just increase the opacity there and then now the cool the cool thing about this is the fact that you guys can create like a like a little glow around the picture so what I like to do is I like to zoom in create a new layer on top of the game character and I'm gonna name this to glow and then go onto the brush right click and choose a soft brush which should be this one here go ahead and lower the size of the brush so now what you want to go ahead and do is just sample a color I'm gonna just go with this middle color here in between the gradient on the text and I'm gonna just go ahead and highlight the whole entire object or picture or whatever it is so something like that would be good so now what you want to go ahead and do is make sure that the glow is on top of the character go onto the blend mode and choose screen so now you have that really nice glowing effect. You could of course lower the opacity if you wish, which is of course what I like to do. A lot of thumbnails that I see have that nice little glow in between the middle of the thumbnail. So to do that, just create a new layer. I'm gonna just name this glass effect because it's pretty much a glass effect. Just kind of go like this a little bit and then upwards a little bit and then just kind of move it. And then now we just go ahead and close the path. We're going to go ahead and fill the path with white or black or whatever you guys want. In this case, we're going to go ahead and do background color just because the background is set to white. Click OK, hold down Shift Command H to hide that and then lower the opacity a lot and change the blending mode to you can do overlay if you want. But uh, I mean, that's pretty much it for this tutorial. Of course, you could do a whole bunch to the thumbnail. It, it really just depends what you guys want to add to it. So yeah, I mean, that's pretty much how I make my thumbnails. You guys can do it differently. If you guys found this video helpful in any way, please leave a rating below. That'll be much appreciated. Share it if you feel like doing it. Subscribe if you haven't. I post videos just like this. Comment down what you guys want to see next, and I'll catch you guys on my next video. Until then, peace out, take care, and enjoy your day.